Hey, look at this beautiful baby boy. Isn't he just the most handsome little baby boy you've ever seen? He's so cute. You've gotten so much bigger. Yeah, so much bigger from the last time I seen you. What a good baby boy. Oh, you're going to get too hot though. Yeah, you're going to get too hot. It's hot. It's been hot. You're gorgeous. And we've got his brother. Hello, little guy. How you doing? Oh, you're handsome too. Yeah. Oh, you, you're a camera ham. Uh, uh, already a camera ham. And now you're playing shy. <laughs> okay, so now it is August 27th at 7.30 or so in the morning. I'm gearing up to start my day. Yesterday was kind of rough. We'll get to that. Okay, so the first thing I want to say is oh, keep up with your food preps, okay? Do you see what's going on here? Okay. This one was bought already vacuum sealed. So that's good. I bought two of them. They were on sale. Because I was out, right? We know I don't get out very often. So this nice organic rice will go with that um, black Thai rice, okay? Which is organic as well. So more of this with a little bit of the black rice. You mix them up. It's really good. Okay. So just keep up with your food preps when you can. We're not going to talk about what's going on in the world when it comes to producing food, shipping food, and distributing food at affordable cost. So when you go shopping, just keep that in mind. All right, so I want to finish reading this because I cut off on it, right? Because I was very upset. I wasn't surprised, but I was extremely upset. Okay. Um, I am going to attempt to make an appeal within the 30 days. I only want to write one or two pages to highlight whatever it is that I can see is discrepancies, right? misleading information, right? Information that was made with haste, right? And based on an opinion or an assumption, which is not a judgment, <laughs> right? And, and is a, 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 a breach of trust because it leans towards negligence that um, perpetrates the problem that the lawsuit was filed for in the first place, right? Because he sure in the hell didn't put no brakes on it, people, that's for sure. And he alluded to certain issues, right? He didn't, he, sure, he isolated certain, not all members in the household, but certain members in the, you know, he, he listed a handful of members in the household so that it, he could convince himself that he did an in-depth analysts even though some of the information he received was obviously from third party because he didn't get it from us and he sure to hell didn't get it in any form of a document so for him to assume anything on a third party information wherever that third party information came from in regards to any member in the family because he doesn't have all the details is is negligent to 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 base a judgment on that people so so I'm, I'm gonna be coming in on that angle and of course Rhea said I already talked already spoke to Rhea she said she's gonna help me and because she can separate herself from the emotional part of it I suppose right and she, you know she can hone in more on the material facts right this is where her and I work really good together right 
So hopefully I'll be able to have something written up that's proficient within two pages. Like I, I really just, my goal is to go to the court registry downtown at the Court of Appeals, pay the $200, file the paperwork for the appeal, get everything stamped, whatever, put it in an envelope, send it to the province, times two, right? And then wait for them to send me back something on a form that's requesting to have it dismissed again. Because that's what they'll do. That's what they've been doing. And because it, now it's going in front of a judge to dismiss it, by default, the judge has no power. The, the Court of Appeal will have no power to uh, listen to what I have to say or to follow through on an investigation or to do a discovery, I think that's what it's called, or to take it to trial because the paperwork that's in front of them is the dismissal and they have to deal with that first before they can deal with everything else that's been going on. So basically, really what the government is doing when they come in with their dismissals is like coming in with a big, it's bigger than a roadblock. It's like coming in with, it's like, it's like they're, it's like they get you in a vault. They lock you up in a vault and there is no escape. And that's why it keeps getting dismissed because their application that's going into court on their scheduled date outrides anything and everything that I've been doing and then the court and the province or the health authority or whatever because I'm dealing with crown corporations here okay um you know they they pull it at any straw that they can find to uh throw it out on a quote unquote kind of like a technicality right like with Sierra and Shimei and Uncle John. The judge in his writings, from what I can understand, he said that I had no right as power of attorney to John or as a mother to my children, dead adult children, to represent them because I wasn't in the care of the health authority or whatever right? And that if anyone was to represent them, it would have to be them themselves, right? Because they were the ones that were injured. So there he's skirting away from the total harm and injury that's been put upon my family over a period of consecutive years through the ongoing gang stalking and targeting of my family because we're of a lower income and vulnerable to that income in terms of that manufactured poverty. Um, unless, of course, I go to court and I ask for administration to my daughter's estates. Okay? Uncle John stuff, they're literally just taking a deck of cards. <clears throat> See, IBC Bank tried to do this. Right? I seen it when they came back writing what they wrote to me, and that's why I never went back to the court, because I could see what they were doing, and I wanted the government to go in there and investigate it themselves, because they won't, they can't, they can't trick the government, right? They can't trick the government like they tricked me. Well, anyway, the judge is now doing what CIBC Bank is trying to do. We've got the enduring power of attorney. We've got the power of attorney. They're trying to merge the two by breaking them up, ignoring, but just putting it here a little bit in terms of the enduring power of attorney. They might mention it over here. Where am I? Yeah, they might mention it over here briefly, but they try and insinuate, mislead, as you read the article, the judgment, that all I had was the power of attorney. And then, because they know I'm getting freaking close, they know it, people. Okay, you can't ignore the evidence in front of you, right? Okay, uh, I mixed this up already. So anyway, so they're, they're, 
they're like this so that you know you miss that one card which is the enduring power of attorney okay because that is the trump card right and they're trying to bury it away as if it doesn't exist and if it did and if it did okay all right in terms of when i went to court on december 7th of 2000 i think it was december 7th of 2017 Uncle John hadn't died yet. He died in January, people, of 2018. Okay? I, I have the video here of me talking. So I'm going to end up putting it into the link if you want to follow up on this. So anyway, in, the, in Judge Ross's writings, okay? In his writings, um, he's saying that whatever I'm doing right now, needed to be dealt with by overriding um, Judge Bowden's dismissal. Okay? And it would never and it never got overridden ridden. It never got overridden because it never went in front of an appeal board to override the decision. Justice Savage put the brakes on that when he sent me to the cops. Because Andrew the Dragon, the lawyer for Fraser Health Authority, came in with a dismissal and his case law, and they denied me access to waiver my fees based on what Andrew said. Okay. So I never got to go in front of an appeal board. Now, apparently it's still... Pending. So when I go to the courthouse, I'll find out. And if if it's so, I'll see if I can pay the $200 and just follow up on it, I suppose. Because that, from what I can gather, is something that, if I did that, you know, it's just more for a person like, say, Judge Ross, to have to work with so that he can exercise his powers to do the right thing. But that's assuming that he'd even want to do the right thing, people. Because it's just... It's just... Nitpicking. Nitpicking. Okay? It's like nitpicking, right? I could... See, right? So anyway, what I'm trying to say here is... <coughs> they're saying... Because I'm saying... I showed Justice Bowden... Judge Bowden... Mr. Bowden, I showed Mr. Bowden the enduring power of attorney and the power of attorney. I showed him John's original will, okay? The one and only will that John has, okay? I showed him the printouts from the bank that I had on hand at that time. And I can guarantee you, people, I had the enduring power of attorney because I got that in 2016. Okay? So not only did Justice Bowden see John's original will, but he's seen the enduring power of attorney plus the photocopy to prove that I had two power of attorneys. Okay? And because I didn't file it through the court registry, I brought it to court with me. This was the second time I went to court. I didn't know what to expect. I didn't know that they were going to try and turn it into a mini trial. I didn't know. Anyway, I brought the most important paperwork that I thought I could have on hand just in case. And sure enough, he asked me if I had it. And I said, yes. And he said, well, let me see it. I said, okay, your honor. I pulled it out of the envelope. I handed it to the court person there that does this stuff. She handed it to the judge. He looked at it, handed it back to her. She gave it back to me. And he says, yeah, well, you might have. You might have, but you're dismissed. That's what he did, people. And that's when I went to go and do the appeal. Okay, but they dismissed it because they came in with another paperwork to avoid talking about the core issues. The core issues that I had enduring power of attorney, obviously that judge ignored it. Okay, and he's trying to say that because I didn't follow up on Judge Bowden's decision, somehow it makes it correct and that you, that gives him power to side with that judge because I didn't challenge that judge's 
decision. I tried to. They denied it. Okay. I'm not going to go around in circles on it. Rhea will help me to write that down in the manner that I just said it, where it's, <laughs> right? Easy to read, easy to understand, no disputing, okay? Because they're accusing me of something that I didn't do, even though I was trying to do what they said I should have done, okay? And then they conveniently ignored the fact that I showed the judge in real time the actual paperwork, but he was the one who chose to ignore it because he didn't want to bring the skeletons out of the closet. He didn't want to be the one to expose Fraser Health Authority staff for their nefarious activities. He didn't want to be the one to show leadership on removing criminal organizations within our government agencies. He just didn't want to be the one to show leadership on that. Because he does what the government tells him to do. So even if I put the appeal in, the government's going to come in with the same form, with the same excuse to dismiss it. And even when I point out to them that that judge ignored what I handed him and that when this judge is telling me that I didn't make an effort to dispute that, that's bullshit. That's, that's, that's doublespeak again, trying to set me up to make me believe their lie. Okay? So. Two pages. No documents. Nothing. Nothing. If the government wants to photocopy all that crap again and send me four more books, well, whatever. What am I supposed to do? Right? Because that's all they're doing. They're just photocopying the same stuff over and over again, and they're completely ignoring the, the criminal activity that's written within it And when it comes to the Criminal Code of Canada, to the legislation that they write but don't care about and don't, don't monitor and don't follow up on and don't nothing with it. They just write it, right? And just the whole nine yards. Okay. So we know what I'm doing, right? Now I'm going to do that to the best of my ability. Right? I got 30 days, but I went out yesterday, and it's bad. My eyes outside, I can, like I say, I can see better inside, but once I get outside, man, or I'm in those bright lights in the grocery stores or places like that, it is really, really bad. But I can't go to the hospital just yet. I got other issues going on with T. Chanel. I may or may not talk about it in this video. But it's bullshit. Let's just put it that way. Yeah, I don't know what's wrong with this younger generation. I really don't. You see, the thing is... The thing is, I don't want to beat up on my daughter. My son's a little more tougher. He came up here said something to me the other day. I said to him, well, you know, why should I? You're mean to me. He wanted something. Right? I said, why should I? You're, you, cause you, I mean, he likes to borrow money from me. Right? <laughs> I said, why should I? Uh, you're mean to me, you know? Oh, you don't have to if you don't want to. And I'm like, and he started to walk away, but he was walking real slow, hoping I'd change my mind, right? And I'm like, oh, okay, just whatever, right? So I said, okay, okay, here, what do you need? Take, because, you know, like, if I needed it, people... He'd give it to me, right? And then I just looked at him and told him, I says, you know, I'm stuck with you, right? I'm, I'm stuck with you. <laughs> You're my son and I'm stuck with you, right? <laughs> Neither one of us are moving out any too, anytime soon, so I'm stuck with you, so just get out of here, right? <laughs> and then I ran into his girlfriend and I went, ah. she looked at me. I said, look, don't worry. I said, it's okay, I'm not mad. And she goes, oh. That's good to know. So, you know, whatever, right? I offered Rhea to come to the house and go nuts in the garage, pick what she wants, right? Like I said, I'll have one or two garage sales and the rest of it, I'm leaving it out for the community. 
yeah, uh, people can go home feeling good because they found something on the road, like the good old days, right? So, you know, and I'll just, it, it, the, the, that will be in relation to the foundation, okay? All right, so that's, that's how I'm going to deal with that issue. So in regards to Tisha and her issue, you know, there's a lot of things I could say, people, and I, I just don't want to beat her up you know, in any kind of capacity outside of maybe mentioning a couple of two things where she should grow up and, you know, give her head a shake and calm down and smarten up and whatever. But at the end of the day, you know, I don't want to sit up here and, you know, and rag on about Tisha and her flaws or whatever because I'm feeling whatever or whatever. But, you know, like at the end of the day... You can only do so much in one day. I'm going to put this on. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's Merrick's hat. Okay. Not that I can see anything here, but... And we're just going to finish reading this. It's not a pick on Tisha day. I'm not going to pick on Tisha. Tisha can just do what Tisha wants. I don't care. I'll do until I can't do no more. Let's just say it that way. Okay, where one? Okay, so what we'll do is we'll take it from the last paragraph. We're at 60. 59. We're at 59 because I stopped at Andre Chorney. And then... I was reading up on Sierra Chorney, and I stopped on the last paragraph. That's what they call these things. They're sentences. I don't know how they can consider sentences to be paragraphs, but besides that point. Okay. Uh, all right. Let's just get this over with. C. This is in regards to Sierra, okay? If there was any basis for the claim, the proper claim might possibly be made against the Fraser Health Authority. Well, no, that's not necessarily true, people, because you have to remember there are different ministries involved with Sierra. We're looking at Fraser Health Authority. We're looking at the Health Authority, okay? That right, uh, the health ministry. We're looking at the health ministry. We're looking at the uh, uh, social development and poverty reduction ministry, which is the actual quote unquote social assistance. We're looking at MCFD, Ministry of Children and Family Development, which is a different ministry in regards to what happened to Andre and foster care and all that stuff. Uh, we're looking at the justice system through the court system and, and prison and that type of thing, okay, in terms of that was her rehab and it was abu they, they used it to abuse her in a sense where the last time she was in jail she told me that she spent most of her time in isolation and she couldn't understand why and she was in jail for a couple of two, three months to be spending time in isolation, a four foot nine vulnerable young woman that basically had her life ripped up from underneath her feet. Anyway, that's four different ministries within the provincial government. So who's responsible for that? The premier, John Horgan, who stepped down? Or is it the Public Safety and Solicitor General and the Attorney General being that they're basically the ones that monitor criminal activity and our, and our justice systems, right? And, and the flow of, 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 that, of those cycles. Okay. So this judge, again, is being misleading. He's not, you know, he's just scratching the surface to make it look like he's I guess you could say doing his job, but he doesn't even have any information, not one iota of information on Sierra in an official sense with a document for him to even make an assessment. So this he's being biased and prejudiced, okay? This is what he's being 
um, in my opinion, and that's how I'm going to write it in the appeal. I'm right. I'm, that's what I'm going to try and do anyway. Okay. Anyway, there is no claim against the current defendants. Well, no, because it's more than just Fraser Health Authority people. Okay? The targeting of an individual doesn't come from one government agency. It comes from multiple government agencies. This is why I do what I do, because I have been walking the talk for years. Okay? And just because I'm being ignored on my YouTube channel and shadow band and hidden away like a dirty secret doesn't mean that other people in society aren't experiencing what I'm experiencing because there's a lot of people that talk about it in terms of targeting, gang stalking, all this other stuff, even more so now, especially in the United States with the political atmosphere where, um, you know, the Democrats want to win while the Republicans or the conservatives or the patriots or those kind of people are fighting out more for freedom versus socialism are being attacked, gang stalked, <laughs> targeted, right? Professionals that come, that come out against the norm when it comes to these inoculations, you know, you've got the yay crowd, and you've got the nay crowd, well, it's the nay crowd that's being targeted, it doesn't matter if it's a doctor, or someone like me. YouTube takes down my videos, gives me a strike, puts me in YouTube jail for two weeks, for talking about something that could potentially injure my family for life, and has, to some degree. Well, it's the same thing with these doctors. They're losing their licenses. You know, they're, they're, some of them are suddenly dying because of this or because of that. And, you know, so, so, you know, for this judge to ignore gang stalking and targeting of my family, because this is my lawsuit, is negligent. But you see, he can do that because not very many people, I don't think, honestly, go to a court, file a lawsuit against the government targeting them, and then come back and do it again, and then come back and do it again, so that the targeting can stop, because that's the end goal, right? To, to, to save the ones that are still alive. I can't save Sierra. I can't save John. I can't save Shamay. I can only hope to save Amari. And I'd like to think that I can save my remaining living children to some degree to where when I'm done with this, they can walk in society and not worry about coming up from something behind them and taking, out, taking them out or taking out their kids. Right? Because we know it happens. It happens to all kinds of people, but this is where the courts are being negligent. They're ignoring it. They're trying to trivialize it. This judge is trivializing. That's why I'm saying he hung us up. He hung us all upside down in front of his courthouse like sows. We could be sows. We could be cows. We could be goats. We could be chickens. We could be ducks. It doesn't matter. He's treating us like animals that are being bled out. When you hang something upside down like that, you're bleeding them out. Okay? They're on, they're on an assembly line. They're being processed for something. Okay? So anyway, You can only get sharper at your game or you fold your cards. Right now, the government's just shuffling cards with the judge. Okay? They're shuffling cards with that enduring power of attorney, accusing me of not trying to dispute Judge Bowden, which is bullshit. Because apparently, it's still pending at the Court of Appeal because it's just barely alive. We'll take it up with Judge Savage because Judge Savage, Justice Savage, whatever kind of Mr. Justice he is, he obviously was shady. Just like Bowden, 
just like Master Taylor. Okay? I've been in front of Master Taylor, Judge Bowden, Justice or Judge Savage, and Judge Ross. And they're all shift, shuffling the cards in around that enduring power of attorney and the power of attorney and the fact that I was fighting for John while he was alive as the judge literally ignored it because he knew that he could because it hadn't been filed with the court registry. Not my fault. Fraser Health Authority came in with absolutely no evidence outside of court law. That is misleading the court. Okay? Are they going to listen to me? No. Because I'm not a bona fide bar lawyer. So, I don't qualify for anything. I don't qualify for legal aid. I don't qualify for to, uh, waiver of fees. I don't qualify for a fair trial. I don't qualify for an investigation. I don't qualify to even be heard in a manner that is uh, conducive to having the information, you know, be more accessible. In terms of it's available, you can, right? How can he make judgment on Sierra when he doesn't even have one official piece of paper about her? But of course, he's got the government telling her. So he believes the whispers. He believes the rumors. He assumes. He based his decision on assumptions, people. And then he made false accusations against me, saying that I didn't try to challenge um, Justice um, Bowden's decision when I did. And they denied me access to that right to, to, to do that. Okay, let's just forget it, okay? And they're going to do it again. That we know. All right, let's go to the next page. Fifty-eight. There's only like four pages. I accept the defense submission on these points. The action as it relates to issues surrounding the death of Sierra Chorney is bound to fail. It is dismissed. Again, he looked at no evidence. Sierra was lured to her death. They kept her in jail for an extended period of time, even though she should have been released. They made sure she was isolated away from the main population, so they kept her in isolation, which clearly wouldn't have been good for her because she was going bonkers. They released her without any form of safety nets with a false idea of being able to come home and live at home because she hadn't done drugs for the two months, we'll just say, or three months while she was in, 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 in incarcerated. So therefore, because she had been incarcerated and quote-unquote was drug-free, she could go home and live with her mom. So she'd come and say, I want you know, I'm like, no, Sierra, you can't because, you know, as soon as I let her stay for any length of time what happens we've got the social workers coming in trying to take the kids out of the house because I'm trying to help my sick and dying daughter basically so anyway right she goes right I she gets out of jail she comes here I said look Sierra's getting dark you need to go and get get go to the shelter that's the only place I could think to have her go right so she leaves she comes back the next day with John Hart, who I had met before, saying, oh, 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 he's got a room. He says, I can rent the room. Mom, don't worry. Uh, this is where I'm going to go. Uh, and he's going, yeah, and I'm talking to him, and I'm saying, oh, okay, so, you right, you, you think you can 
manage with Sierra. He goes, oh yeah, you know, you know, everybody's got their 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 quirks, and you know, it's it's good, right? Don't worry, I got a room, you know, just rare. And I'm like, okay. And four days and two days later, two days after that, people, he calls me up and says that Sierra's dead in his house. I said, excuse me. Yeah. Well, we got the video of that result after the fact and what the cops did. Okay? To which is evidence, material evidence that needs to be followed up on, preferably by the government, with the acting judge paying attention to the shenanigans that are going on in this province. Somebody asked me, forever truly, one of the, my subscribers on YouTube, if I felt if fentanyl was being used for organ harvesting, I said 1,000% correct. Okay? That is the reason fentanyl is so rampant in our society right now. Because it's the mass harvesting of not just organs, but just body parts in general. Okay? In combination, I suppose, with the depopulation of the uh, immigrant migration. As one goes out, another one comes in. <clears throat> okay, anyway. Andre Chorney. Let's just stay focused. It's so hard for me to stay focused on this. The plaintiff complains that the Ministry of Children... Well, first of all, I didn't complain, people. Um, I, don't, I, don't, I didn't even write... You see, this is the thing. In my notice of civil claim, I don't think I... Maybe I did write... Rhea has my notice of civil claim. I suppose I could read it on what's on Google, but... Anyway, I, I, I wasn't focusing on Andre in terms of my quote-unquote notice of civil claim. My issue with the notice of civil claim was obviously Uncle John hadn't been dealt with, right? And that was proof in the pudding in terms of the court cases that I filed that have yet to be rectified in terms of justice. Um, obviously, Shemay, right? And then I, I, you know, I, I put in Sierra at the very end only because I was at the end of writing the notice of civil claim, to which, out of respect, I kept it down to 19, 18 pages or whatever it was. And then next thing you know, Sierra's dead and all that funky shit was going on. So anybody who, you know, in my situation, they would put it in at the bottom of the notice of civil claim so that, you know, she didn't get lost in the wayside, right? Um, and then when I did my documents, you see, this is where this judge is assuming shit too, right? When I did my documents and I submitted my documents in regards to Uncle John, I put in some information in regards to Andre and when we were fighting for Andre and how everybody put down their, their signatures in terms of agreement in support of Sierra so that, you know, it go to lawyer, to the court or to the social workers in their office or wherever it was going, okay? The point is, is I submitted a couple, a couple of those examples of Uncle John actively participating in household matters with his John Henry, with his signature. But for whatever reason, the judges interpreted it as if I was making a complaint. Well, yeah, I was confirming that there was gang stalking and the targeting of my family in relation to Andre at that time, in that time period. But, it, it, you know, it wasn't, it wasn't something for him to... assume a negative judgment on without following up on those material facts. But you see, the government doesn't want him to follow up on the material facts. Because it's one thing for me to say they kept Sierra in isolation for two and a half months out of three months while she was in jail. As the judge said, we're going to put her in the Brady house when we release her when in fact, 
I don't know what the hell the Brady House is because I still never found it, people. They had eight years to put Sierra in the Brady House. Anyway, she gets released after being in isolation for quite a long time. And four days later, she's dead. Okay? The government can get into those court files and the, and, and the prisons, prison files to confirm that they had her in isolation. And they can put a question mark as to why. What did she do so wrong that she deserved to be in isolation, basically, for two months until she was released to only end up dead? at the hands of herself with some guy standing over her okay government doesn't want those files documented with the court registry people you want to know why because they're doing it to hundreds of thousands of other people in the system okay that's kind of where they want to bring me down to. In terms of breaking me. Breaking my spirit. Breaking my house. Breaking up my family. Just breaking me. Right? They're really hoping that they can get me on that cycle too. Because they've got thousands of people on that cycle. And Sierra was one of them. What has he got to say about Andre? I only submitted that information because it had John's inf John's signature on it. That's all. Was to prove that John was involved. And John was supportive. And John was aware. And John put his two cents in. Because John was a family member who deserves justice. Because he was medically kidnapped. And held hostage by a rogue freaking corporation. A crown one at that. So they could steal his money and set the precedence to steal a whole bunch of other old people's money. If John had no money, he would have been standing in the welfare line yesterday. Andre Chorney. Gee. The poor man standing in the welfare line, putting his John Henry on that paperwork that I gave to the judge to which the judge assumed I was complaining about Andre when in fact I wasn't I was trying to prove that Uncle John had a, ha, ha, was important you know he played a very important role in his household okay and that his signature counted and that his voice counted okay that was the purpose of submitting that particular information but the judge took it upon himself to use it to his advantage and accuse me of a complaining about what was going on with Andre okay it, at that time period, um, if if it was a a guy standing in a welfare line instead of Uncle John's signature, would his signature been any more important than Uncle John's? Because right now, as it is, the judge is completely ignoring anything where Uncle John had any kind of standing in this house. It's insignificant. It doesn't matter. So, in essence, his signature was worthless. But yet, his signature was so worthless, people, that they had to medically kidnap him, drug him up, practically kill him, just so they could steal his money and use his signature to do it. Okay? I, I, I don't know if, if I'm explaining this correctly. His signature was worthless until they made it valuable with the money. I didn't submit his signature because it was valuable in money. I submitted his signature with those particular forms at that particular time in life when we were being targeted by MCFD. Material fact. And John was an active participant in the daily activities of his family, which was us, to get Andre back, which makes Uncle John's signature invaluable. That's where the wealth is, but the 
judge is choosing to ignore it because he's protecting the fraud that the Crown Corporation facilitated through the theft of money, which devalued Uncle John and put him in a really bad place where he basically died an old, lonely man. That's the justice I'm fighting for, people. You don't think I don't walk around this house apologizing to John that I couldn't rescue him when he asked me to? You don't think I don't walk around this house telling Shimei I'm sorry that I couldn't figure out that she was being poisoned with medical fentanyl because I just, who would have thought? Like, who would have thought that somebody would come into your life and lace your cigarettes with medical fentanyl and then wait until you were sick enough so that they can come up behind you, knock you on your head? She may has a bruise on her head, people, okay? Something that Fraser Health Authority staff tried to deny, but I can prove that she had a bruise on her head, all right? And then she was injected with cocaine and morphine to make it look like she was doing a speedball when, in fact, she was being murdered. And the murder took a place over a period of three days, you don't think I don't apologize to Shimei every week after week after week that I am sort like in terms of seven day periods. You don't think I don't apologize every week to her saying I'm sorry. I don't know why I couldn't see what was happening to you and stop it. I do people. And just as much as I do that for Shimei, I do that for Sierra. Why couldn't I just try and help you a little more? I, you don't know how much we went out of our way. Not even just me. The kids, to try and help Sierra. Nothing worked, people. It just got worse and worse and worse. And the government did nothing, in essence, to help me other than to agitate it and to make it worse. Okay? So, you know, Uncle John, every week, I'm sorry, John. I'm sorry, John. I'm so sorry. And you know what he tells me? Don't worry. It's okay. You'll see us again. Don't worry. Just hang in there, Judy. The kids need you. That's what he's telling me. The kids, Andre, Amari, my kids, they need you. Right? Just don't worry. Calm down. Relax. It's okay. Because he knows I I'm, did what I could, people. But when you got a judge receiving the information and handing it back to you and then telling you that, yeah, maybe, maybe you have, but get out of here anyway, it's being dismissed. And then you have another judge coming back and saying that you will still have it dismissed because um, you didn't dispute what that first, second, last judge said to you when in fact it was denied. Like, come on. It's stupid. Fucking stupid. So I'm running around. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry to Shmay. I'm so sorry, Shmay. You, like, you don't know. You don't know. I want to start crying. And then I can't cry. Right? And then my eyes cloud up even more. Same thing with Uncle John. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. I know how lonely you were. I can feel it. Right? But then, you know, he tells me. Right? I'm pretty sure. Because <laughs> he would say it. Just don't worry. It's okay. You'll see. You'll see me again. Just... Take care of the kids. Stick together as a family. The only thing is, is my family's self-imploding. What little, what little family I have left. Because time is the government's weapon. Right? It's that cortisol in the brain, eh? Which I got a lot of right now. Okay, let's just keep this short. <coughs> I want to finish it. So we know why I submitted that information about Andre. It wasn't because I was complaining about what happened to Andre outside to show that there was issues that needed to be, you know, discussed in terms of the gang stalking and the targeting over a period of years, not just one, two, or three, but more. Uh, but it was, it was more for, it was really f to prove that Uncle John was in the house and was well aware of what was going on was a, a, 
a major factor in decision making in this house and he had his role and his status to which all these judges whoever lawyers whatever are purposely choosing to ignore because they don't want to be held to account to their nefarious acts okay the plaintiff complains that the Ministry of Children and Family Development illegally and improperly in and improperly apprehended son her son Andre Chorney. So he did it again. So throughout the whole thing he keeps saying Andre is my son. Or maybe he's just saying Sierra, I don't know. The way that sentence reads makes it sound like the plaintiff complains that the Ministry of Children and Family Development illegally and improperly apprehended her son, Andre Chorney. Yeah, that's one complete thought. He's saying that Andre is my son. So he's being misleading. So that needs to be corrected. It's like those medical files, right? They change one or two things and they get other people thinking of other things. Now people are going to be running around saying Andre's my son because the judge said so. Just like that paramedic. Oh no, Amari is the way Amari is. is because the mother was a drug addict. The mother did drugs. Even if she wasn't a drug addict, she did drugs. So therefore, that's why Amari's having seizures today. And he's the paramedic trying to, straight, trying to save my grandson. Yeah, okay, well why don't you save my grandson and stop making assumptions? But he already wrote it in his file when he took Andre, uh, Amari into the hospital that the mother uh, had previous drug in her system at, you know, while in vitro, while she was carrying, right? Just, this is how they do it, people. So if I don't fight back, that will forever be written like that, and people will never really fully understand the story, because that's what they want. They don't want the judge and the, your opponent. They don't want the other side to know the truth. They're shuffling the cards. Sixty, as set above, the allegations relating to Andre Chorney occurred. Well, first of all, I gave him three pieces of paper with John's signature on them. That's it. There is no allegations. We never got into the allegations. That was proof of documents of John's signature being in this house, being an active member to his family. And then, after we dealt with John, then we could talk about Andre. And then, if we needed to, we could pull up our documents. I have my documents, and the government has their documents. And we can examine the documents and figure out who's right, who's wrong, and fix the wrong. And if need be, strengthen the legislation, being it's only the government that can do that. And maybe hire a ministry just to monitor their employees. Period. Why don't they open up a ministry just to, just to monitor their employees? Employees and make sure that their employees are working with ethics. I think the taxpayers wouldn't mind paying for something like that if they knew that when they were coming into contact with these government workers that the government was making sure that they were doing their jobs correctly. Taxpayers would not mind paying for that. But you see, the government needs their dirty workers to do their dirty work for them. <clears throat> and judges are dirty. Okay. I set out above the allegations 
relating to Andre Chorney occurred before he was returned to her care in or about 2014. The limitation period for any such claim, if one exists, has long since passed. No, not when it relates to, in terms of documenting, gang stalking, the targeting of a family over a period of consecutive years that caused great harm and injury, not only to the individuals being targeted in that family, but to the whole family to which this judge is omitting in terms of there are other family members that have been injured by this ongoing shenanigans to manufacture poverty and then to exploit those that live within that poverty line, right? Um, right? That uh, it's, it's evidence, people, of the gang stalking and the targeting of the harm and the injury. There is no statute of limitation on that because those are material facts. Those facts will never go away. Okay? And, like I said, at the end of the day, assuming that any of us are even here by the time Andre turns 19 years old, okay? Because we got a long way to go with what's going on in the economy right now, right? He can file his own lawsuit for, because there is absolutely no statute of limitation for him for what happened to him through MCFD. Right? Am I saying that's what Audrey should do? No, I'm not saying that. I'm just saying through my travels, doing all this stuff, I was informed that he could do that. So that's, that's something to consider if this shenanigan shit that I'm doing is still even going on in nine years from now. Okay, and just because, just because, uh, based on what this judge is saying, that it, it wouldn't be a legitimate lawsuit to file for what happened to Andre, to which I never had no intentions of doing, because when I went to court and I settled for the agreement that I have with the government right now in terms of uh, the sections under the, uh, you know, Family Act and the other act that the MCFD works under, <clears throat> um, the financial agreement that I have with the government kind of puts me in a position of being a foster care parent because I'm not his parent. And... Um, that's just how they operate their books, right? What I'm trying to say is... Oh, what am I trying to say? When I, when I agreed to that at the time of getting Andre home, I did it in good faith. I had no intentions of coming back and suing the government for what they did to Andre. I was just happy to get him back. Okay? And I just move forward. However, over the years, Uncle John got medically kidnapped. She may have got murdered. Sierra got lured to her death. <coughs> right? You know, it starts to show a pattern, even though the pattern started before then. Andre's just a blip in that pattern, to which becomes important to the overall lawsuit which is targeting of a family and what it's led into in current and past events, right? But he's trying to make it sound like I was putting that information in to try and get something out of it. No, I put the information in there, one, to show you that there was an issue, 
but more than anything, being that you were using Uncle John as an excuse to try and throw out everybody to hang us all up to dry, I put his John Henry in there to show you that he was very involved w w w with what was going on. Let Eleanor come in with her paperwork with John's signatures on anything in the last 35 years, and she won't have nothing, not one stitch of iota of anything until after she got him half dead at the Victoria General Hospital under the Island Health Authority to which is another crown corporation that the government is responsible for. Sixty-one. The claim as it relates to complaints relating to Andre Chorney dismissed. Well, first of all, like I said, there was only three pieces of paper. It came in an, under a document list, and it wasn't even really written into the notice of civil claim because that wasn't the focus, although the judge is trying to make it sound like it's the focus as he's, con uh, as he's misconstruing the information and, 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 and providing, you know, he's switching the cards around. He's saying that Andre is my son. He's saying that I'm fighting to, you know, something that is long past due and out of, out of statue of lim limitation to which, you know, in all my years, I've never really felt the need to take the government to court because of what happened to Andre because I've always known in the back of my mind that if things never ever straightened out, Andre himself could do it. And there were other things that I needed to deal with and then those issues got more difficult because now we're dealing with murder by fentanyl with cops and coroners covering it up so that they can harvest organs basically whether legally or illegally it doesn't matter because both are on the rise right in terms of there's more legal donations coming in from dead bodies already posted the article to prove that they take organs out of dead bodies but they got the perfusions machines now so you know that kind of preserves the body, the organs in the body, before, before they take out the organs. Anyway, Shemay Choney, those deeper issues. The plaintiff makes several allegations relating to the death of Shemay Choney. She alleges that Shemay was murdered and that the RCMP provided false information to the plaintiff about Shemay's death. The plaintiff also alleges that Shemay was dead before she was admitted to hospital and that the hospital staff allowed her corpse to decompose in hospital for nine days before she was pronounced dead on April 11th of 2018. No, April 19th. She was dead in the basement on April 11th of 2019, 18. <coughs> and then they turned off their machine on April 19th. So that, what, is that another typo? Is, is that just a typo? How do I get that corrected? Because that's not true. Okay. And that whole statement is up for debate. Okay? He's assuming. Okay? He's just trying to, you know, wrap his head around you know, the top the top of the issue. Anyway. The plaintiff seeks a court order requiring a full investigation of circumstances of her death. Yes, I do. And Sierra's. And John's, really. Right? Sixty-three. <clears throat> there are myriad problems with these allegations and relief including the defendant has no relationship to the RCMP. Yeah, but doesn't the government pay 
the RCMP a portion of the RCMP's wages? Only 30% of the RCMP's wages come from the federal government. The rest of it, the other 70%, has to come from the individual provinces that divvy it up between their municipalities. Okay? That's how the RCMP gets the paid. So, yes, the government pays the RCMP. Okay? Because the federal government only pays them 30% of their wage. So that is an incorrect statement. So I guess the material fact is where I come in and I pull up the fact that it's the province that basically pays the municipalities to pay the RCMP because the federal government doesn't pay nearly enough for what they're worth. Okay? Because of offloading. As we've got our city councils trying to kick out the RCMP on a federal level, level, bringing in their local policing department as they hire on their goons, those baby-faced cops that stand at six foot seven that like to guard doors and wait for the stuff. Okay. We're not sure what the stuff is yet, but we bu we got a pretty good idea because it's on camera. Which is a material fact. The, two, the court does not have the power to order the named defendants or any other entities to conduct a full investigation. Again, that's not true. I know, well... In this situation, with it just being a dismissal in front of him, probably not, because that's how they cover their bases, people. Right? That's how they can avoid taking responsibility f for things. That's how they can offload. That's how they can shuffle things around. Okay? Because the government came in with their form, dismiss it, the judge said, okay, that's within my power. That's within my power. I can dismiss it. And he did. As he ignored the fact that there are clauses within... I'm just trying to think where it comes from. I'm not sure if it's the Criminal Code of Canada or if it's actual within the legislation itself. Either or, he was hired to dismiss it, and that's what he did. He's a janitor. If you're a janitor, you get paid to do janitorial work. He was paid to dismiss it. That's what he did. Because he has no power. And if he did, he chose to ignore it. Three, the crown is not a proper defendant in relation to these allegations as they related to the hospital and hospital employees. That's not true because the hospital and their employees, the whole system in terms of a health authority is being paid for by the province through the Ministry of Health and that portfolio. Okay? So that is that is a contradiction to the actual paper trail, I would think. Okay? Right? Just because Fraser Health Authority signs the check for their employees doesn't mean that Fraser Health Authority has generated that money for themselves outside of maybe accepting donations from the Children's Foundation or something like that to add on to their hospitals. But anything else when it comes to building hospitals, capital costs, and all that other crap is a check from the, prov from the province. Okay? And that, and, and that goes from health authority to health authority to health authority. That, I would think, would be a material fact. So that has to be disputed somehow, some way.
In addition to the other issues, this action was commenced April 20th, 20. Shimei Chorney died more than two years before the action was commenced. Shimei died on April 11th. They classified her through a document, through a hospital setting of being officially dead, which would have been her third time by this time documented in their files, or at least two on in their files, right? Because <coughs> they documented her dead on the 16th, and they released her on the 16th, but they didn't turn off their machine until the 19th, people. So I took it from the 19th, and, of course, looking after Amari and stuff isn't easy, right? Doing the stuff that I was doing isn't easy, yard, house, whatever, okay? So then I go to the courthouse to submit my notice of civil claim, which is under two-year statute of limitation, because, you know, I just wanted to get it there, do get it started, right? And um, I went in on the 16th of April. They sent me away. I had to go back on the 17th, right, and drop it into the drop box, but they didn't post it until the 20th. Not my fault. I have photocopy of the money order to prove that I had purchased the $200 for the ministry with the ministry's name on it because the ministry itself was negligent to provide a proper... Um, office to be able to do that transaction so that some funky judge couldn't come back and try and play a fast one on you. Okay? That's just funky shit. What I mean, that's what I mean by nitpicking. That's just nitpicking. So, I, I didn't submit that in my documents. Because I didn't think it was going to be important. I thought that I was actually going to get an attentive judge that would really look at Uncle John's paperwork and give himself a shake and say, holy crumb, that could be me one day. God forbid if that's me one day. God forbid if it's my friend, my friend, that ends up like that. And I had a chance to do something to help my friend before it even happened and I blew it off because my government told me so. Because I'm nothing more than a janitor cleaning up the government's crap. And John can tell you when they want to make crap they make crap. He used to clean up after them for 25 years. So that's, 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 that information is wrong. And I have documents to prove it. <clears throat> In addition to the fatal flaws listed above, there is a further fatal flaw with the <coughs> allegations relating to Shimei Chorney, Shimei Chorney's hospitalization, and death. 66. To the extent... To the extent that the plaintiff's allegations that certain entities covered up Shimei's murder so that illegal organ harvesting could occur, the plaintiff links that that allegation to the province by saying that the province uses hospitals. He's just repeating himself. Didn't he already say this? Didn't I already read this? They 17 pages with him repeating himself. And then they accuse me of verbal diarrhea and say that's all I do is repeat myself. <laughs> I'm sure I read this already. <laughs> okay? <laughs> oh, man. Harvested organs using its employees to carry out the nefarious crimes, participate in witchcraft, and satism, yeah, he already wrote this, right? Because they're, they're trying to 
for the next person that reads this, as soon as, you know, you mention witchcraft and satism and you suggest that they're loose harvesting and all this other crap, all of a sudden you become you know, uh, mentally unstable, you know, and, and, you know, you're living in a la-la line, even though for in, in with material facts, if you bring in the Criminal Code of Canada, where it was written, where they had addressed witchcraft before, but in 2018 of December, turn around and remove the whole section. So if you're going to remove a whole section that specifically talks about witchcraft, don't come back and accuse me and say that it doesn't exist when it was already written into the Criminal Code of Canada and then removed because they're trying to make it trendy. They're trying to make it trendy. That's why they removed it. So they can accuse you of suffering from psychosis. And then when you come with the Criminal Code of Canada and you show them, they ignore it by shuffling papers. Because they're not witches. They're not warlocks. God, no. No, they're godly, remember? We're dealing with godly people that believe in God, right? That are pure and ethical and do no harm, okay? <laughs> mm, come on, get through this. I just want to stop already. Stop, stop talking. I talk too much. Oh boy. It's so, it's upsetting. Nefarious crimes, <clears throat> participating in witchcraft and satism, target the Chorney family, and endorse gang stalking behavioral behavior against them. Sixty seven. On this point, the Crown argues that I should subject the plaintiff's allegations to a septical analyst. The Crown submits that I should not accept as facts all of the allegations of the notice of civil claim in support of the submission the defendant relied on the Court of Appeal decision by Jug, by, oh, sorry. In, okay, so now they're bringing in their court, their, their case law. Okay, they're not bringing in what happened to me with Justice Savage at this point, but they're bringing in somebody else's lawsuit, okay? Uh, defendant relied on the Court of Appeal's decision in Young versus Borzoni at Tell 2007. So they brought in a judgment from 2007 from some other case to determine that whatever I had to say was insignificant, even though we never really talked about any of that. The only people who talked about witchcraft and all that crap was the government. That's not what I was talking about. Okay. Right. I, I'm just documenting it that it's a problem. And it's not a problem that I face by myself. It's a problem that society is facing because our governments have gone out of their way to even take it out of their criminal codes and, and legislations and that type of thing. Their laws, their statutes, their acts, right? The Criminal Code of Canada is the ruling ruling law of Canada. But they took it out. They took it out for a reason but yet they want to carry on and accuse you of being unreasonable as they use that against you. Okay, 68. I accept this submission by the Crown. The allegations of illegal organ harvesting are, in a word, fantastical. They are bound to fail.
because nobody takes governments to court for organs being illegally harvested because again we're dealing with godly employees that are employed by a godly government with ethics that do no harm no injury and no wrong they are <clears throat> in essence the perfect workforce <coughs> 69. The allegations relating to the death of Shimei Chorney are dismissed. <coughs> he didn't dismiss it on anything outside of what? What are his material facts, people? <coughs> they cited a court case here but didn't say what it was that he based his decision on on this court case other than he did. Now we're going to go into Amari D. Johnson after he told me to remove Amari from whatever it was that I was trying to do because of Amari's birth injury somehow made Amari special and then he told me to go get um, a birth injury lawyer knowing that there are no birth injury lawyers in the province of British Columbia Canada unless you've got a fifty thousand dollar retainer and therefore it's just spouting out in the wind okay but for whatever reason he decided to change his mind and write in Amari okay and again Amari is just that paper trail just another, you know, example of what the targeting of a family through various government agencies um, manifests over a period of time because they do it through being spiteful, retaliatory, you know, they have already pre-planned agendas that they need to fill in terms of like that research study they needed 20 kids in order to be able to get the full funding in order to follow up with the research study over a period of 20 years or through the lifetime of that child to continue with the study that's being paid for basically by the government okay but if only five kids are being injured through birth injuries but they need 20 to get a full statistic in terms of that research study, well then, yeah, some of them are going to be bought and paid off, and some of those kids are going to be purposely injured at the time of the birth because they're expendable. Just like all these deaths with fentanyl, there is no justice for them because they're expendable. There's more value in their death and in their body parts than there are is with them being alive and walking this planet with their families. Amari D. Johnson, 70. With respect to the circumstances of the birth of Amari D. Johnson, to which he has no, no documentation outside of maybe what we said in terms of he was injured at the time of his birth. She may went five days in labor. They turned her away twice. Okay, that's all just him asking for questions so he could figure out what we're doing so that he could sit there and think about it later, right? Mix things up and then come back with his judgment without looking at not even one piece of legitimate documentation. <clears throat> With respect to the circumstances of birth of the birth of Amari D. Johnson, the plaintiff alleges that employees at Fraser Health Authority were negligent or worse in respect of Shimei's pregnancy and, deli and delivery. So he acknowledged that. But, as with the analysts above, the proper plaintiff in this circumstance would be Amari, a little boy 
who has a life expectancy of 45 years, who will never walk, never crawl, never be able to sit up on his own, will never talk like us, cannot feed himself, right? And so on and so on and so on. He's the only one who has the right to stand up for himself, just like this judge wants the dead, Sierra, Uncle John, Shimei, to stand up for themselves and nobody else to fight for them. Only the dead can fight for themselves. Only the injured who can never fight for themselves are expected to fight for themselves. Via a litigation guarding, by a litigation guardian. So in other words, he's, that's what he said. You go take it, go get a, go get a, go get a injury lawyer and go fight for Amari on your own. As if somehow the targeting of him in this family via through his mother is insignificant because the judge is trying to ignore the fact that this family has been targeted for a long time. Okay? And it's being done through different ministries, through different techniques. And Amari is just one example out of a long list of examples. But for whatever reason, the judge seems to think that this is a separate issue when he's looking at the whole. Miss Chorney is not his litigation guardian. <laughs> okay, so how do I become his quote-unquote, litigation guardian. I've never heard of being a litigation guardian. I am his guardian. <laughs> Do I have to go in front of a judge and ask the judge to get permission to fight for my grandson? Is this what this individual is saying? Go in front of another Judge Ross or a Judge Bowden or a Judge Savage or a Masters Taylor and ask those guys to allow me to litigate for my grandson because my grandson is at the mercy of those individuals and his kind, their kind, their kind people. I have to get permission first before I can fight for Amari in any capacity? How do you even go in front of a judge? Gee, your honor, my grandson was injured at the time of his birth. I have guardians since his mother's been murdered. But you know what? Nobody wants to listen to me because nobody wants to take responsibility for what for what happened. And uh, But I've been told by this honorable judge, this, this godly judge, that I'm supposed to find another judge just like him, which is you, and stand in front of you and ask for your holy, God-given per permission. You're... You know, like your your almighty, holy permission to allow me to fight for my grandson in a in a court sense, because we know I can't get a lawyer, so that that's not happening. So let's be realistic here. You know, come down from the freaking clouds and come into my world for a while, walk in my shoes for a little while, see what it's like for me with not having money rolling around in the bank as I rub my hands thinking how I can extend my life because I can afford to buy body parts along the way. Okay? Because I think once they get to that age and they got sitting on so much money that's all they got left to look forward to is when they get a new heart or a new liver or new this or new that. And it doesn't matter how many times they get it as long as they get to live an extra year or two. I think when you get to that stage and you're sitting on a big wad of money, that's probably all they do. That's all they live for is waiting for the next body part. Just so they can walk around town bragging about how important and godly they are. Well, okay, I'm not going to get mad. But that's, who do I go in front of a judge? I have to go now in front of a judge to ask if I can litigate against my grandson. Okay. Okay. And that would apply to Andre as well, if I wanted to go that route. But that's not what I'm trying to do with Andre. Okay. Okay. <clears throat>
Although I do want Andre's story to be acknowledged and factored in. Seventy-two. Further, the province is not the proper defendant in relation to any medical malpractice. They write the legislation. They're in charge of their employees. It's their duty to ensure that the public is safe from their employees. And this is more than malpractice. This is organized crime. That's infiltrated every district in the province of British Columbia, Canada, to some degree, I am sure. On the last point, 73, I wish to be clear, nothing in these reasons should be interpreted as having any effect or impact on the right of Amari Johnson by a properly appointed litigation guardian to bring any action alleging medical Negligence. So, in other words, he's saying if this guy's not a qualified fucking lawyer, get lost, bitch. That's, exa that's exactly what he's saying. If you can't come forward with an injury birth lawyer and have him paid in fucking blood money, then just fuck off, okay? Go away, little girl, because you don't qualify. You don't qualify for any kind of legal assistance. You don't qualify to have a voice. You don't qualify for jack shit because you're not the appointed lawyer. That's basically what he's saying, people. Like, how do you... Get in touch with legal... Get in touch with that law. You know, you know, they phone up your law. You, you, you need help with law. You phone them up and say, well, here's, here's a question for you. <clears throat> what form do I fill out to go in front of the judge to ask the judge if I have permission to fight for my grandson who's in my care? And then go submit the form, pay, pay what needs to be paid, wait to go in front of a judge to ask him if you can file a lawsuit on your own, by yourself, fighting for your grandson because your grandson was uh, injured at the time of his birth. And it's one big cover-up, basically, right, where nobody wants to take any responsibility. And being that I can't afford a lawyer, I have to do it to myself. Can I get your permission, Your Honor? Can I do that? Can I fight for my grandson on my own? And before I can file anything, I have to get, what, a yes from that judge? But, of course, that judge is going to say no, because he's already going to know who I am before I even walk through the door. And he's going to say no, Miss Joyne, or no, maybe we'll have the paramedic show up and do another fast one on me, okay? Or who knows? Who knows, people? Right? So that Amari's situation never, ever ends up in court. Okay? Like I said, this judge hung us upside down in front of his courthouse. And I'm sure this is just one example of one family out of tens of thousands going through the same thing that I'm going through. Only a lot of those people won't realize what they're going through. Because it takes a long time to catch up to what they're doing to your family over a period of years. Right? So that, I'm going to have to find where I can get that permission. I have to go to my father and ask my father, or maybe mother, because it could be a female judge, if I can represent my grandson on my own in litigation for the birth injury that he received at the time of his birth 
because Fraser Health Authority staff were retaliating against his mother because of what was going on with Uncle John. Not only that, but they needed to fill that slot for their research study. And being that, you know, there's a lot of kids out here that are falling through the cracks at the time of their birth because of the multiple issues with poverty out here, they just thought that, you know, they could take us out. Take us out. They take one here, take one here, take another one over there. Before you know it, you're down to only half or almost nothing left. And once this all dries up, they'll just move to the next household. And if those people aren't getting involved with this kind of stuff, they're not going to understand what's happening to them. And then that's when they start to believe the lie, when the government comes back and says, oh, they did it to themselves. They killed themselves because they were depressed. Oh, you don't want to accept that? Then fine. It was an accident. Either or, believe our lie and get lost. Because we're so busy. Because we've got another 15 people over there that just killed themselves. And we need to go break the news to those families that it was done by purpose. Because those people were depressed and wanted to kill themselves. So it was suicide by fentanyl. Oh, and then when the family box at it saying, no, 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 that would never happen. Then it becomes an accident. But never murder. And the cycle just goes around and around and around and around as the numbers of donations of cadaver organs increase with those cadaver organs being transplanted into something. Not to mention what's being sold on the black market. To which our judges do this shit. because they're convinced that every government employee, 700,000 government employees in the province of British Columbia, Canada, are godly. It's like they came from a different planet. That's how godly they are. Further, this court has no power to require any entity to correct the records relating to the care provided to Shimei Chorney in respect of the birth of Amari. Well, no, not him himself at that particular time, but at some point in the future, right? So that, that was a, a, a mute point, really, outside of whatever. The claims relating to Shimei's pregnancy and Amari's birth are dismissed without looking at one piece of paper and without getting any kind of information outside of he assumed that Shimei overdosed and I refused to accept his facts. Just like with this paramedic. I refused to accept the paramedic's facts that Amari was the way he was because Shimei did drugs in the first trimester of her pregnancy versus no, she was, he was injured at the time of his birth because of a botched C-section where the labor was dragged out for an extended period of time that resulted in his heartbeat dropping and not coming up to which caused brain damage. Okay, I got the material facts on that, but the paramedic seems to think he's godly and that whatever he's got to say is word. Well, the judge is doing the same thing without any information out of, outside of what he's assuming. So how is, how Rhea is going to help me to write that down where it's like, you know... Like I said, it's, it's, I don't expect th the next entity that I come in front of to be any better than what I've already been in front of people. I just don't. Okay? It's the exercise. It's the fact that you go through the motion that's important here. It's the fact that you stand your ground and you're not afraid to face the penalties that are going to come your way whichever way they come from, 
okay, because they come, right, you know, right, what, you're going to take $100 off of my welfare check, you're going to take $300, you are going to take $50, what you going to do, because I owe the government money for something so that they can continue hurting my family, because they're telling the judge to dismiss the information based on his own assumptions, or whatever trick, trick, whatever little card trick he can pull out from underneath his sleeve because he's godly. He's not a warlock. He's just godly. He sits right next to God, people. This guy sits right next to God. He's closer to God than Jesus himself. He's God's best friend. Yeah. And so is every other government worker in this province. They're all got God in the palm of their hand because they're godly. Where am I? Okay. Other claims. Oh, jeez. Long video again. Okay, this is it. Two more pages, that's it. Page and a half. Finally, I must address the underlining thread that pervades the notice of civil claim. The plaintiff alleges that she and her family have been stalked and harassed, to which he never allowed me to provide the evidence. And what evidence I did provide, he ignored and trivialized it and tried to explain it away. And when he couldn't explain it away, he used case law to do it for him at the request of the government. The plaintiff of ledges that she and her family have been stalked and harassed by members of public sector unions for decades. These allegations seek to address perceived wrongs relating to the family's ineligibility for social assistance and other government programs. So he's taking it back to 2003 when the BC Liberal government illegally cut me off of welfare nine months in advance before the legislation even came into effect, even though technically under their legislation, if and when it would have came into effect, I wouldn't have fell under because I had five dependent children and the worst that they could have done through their legislation was deduct a hundred dollars a month from my welfare check for not going to work. They had absolutely no legal right to cut me off of welfare in January of 2003, in the middle of winter, and then proceed to deny me social assistance in 2006 when I put an application in for social assistance, but that was denied, right? This is what he's referring to. It was denied because I had children's trust funds to which the government of the day is asking poor people to invest into children's trust funds because they're safe investments for their children. Okay, so my memory card got full. That's what happened. So I had to upload and clear out the camera. So we're going to finish this video. I understand it's a long one, but it is what it is. No ball and chain on your ankle for you to have to sit and listen to it okay I'm just saying <clears throat> now I'm not gonna rush with it even though it's a long video you know as I'm thinking right you know time is precious everybody's busy everybody's got their own problems we have to multitask so that we we you know get more done and with less effort or whatever it may be right and I'm like okay we know we're going around and around and around in the same hamster wheel with the same kind of people in the courthouse. We know what the end result is going to be so far, thus far, each and every time, 
you try and crack that door open, I guess you could say, right? So I, I'm like, I am really consciously trying to figure out a way where I can cut down on the gab, import my emotions, or whatever, into the subject matter where it, it kind of blurs, blurs, I don't want to call them teachings, but it kind of blurs the teaching here because if anything, whatever it is that I've been trying to do all these years in terms of fighting for justice, there is a silver lining in it if I can provide at least some kind of structure where there's instruction so that for the ones coming into the game and want to know how to navigate within that game without completely submitting to it and becoming victim to it can grab onto the few teachings that I provide through my rambling. So, what I'm trying to say is, okay, we know where we're at. I, I already warned Rhea, I only want a couple of pages. I already got a sense of what I want to hone into in terms of that appeal. How it's going to be worded remains to be seen. Um, how it will be received... I don't want to say remains to, remains to be seen because we already know the form for dismissal is coming in right behind it. That's a given. And because of that, we're going to probably end up having to start fresh. But before I can start fresh, I have to finish this and bring to the surface more as to what really happened on December 7th of 2018 when Justice Bowden dismissed it the first time. Okay? And through that process, over the next week or two, before I get to the courthouse to submit my application for an appeal, I have to find a way to communicate that information to the viewer without a lot of distraction. In terms of, here's point A, here's point B, here's point C, this is the result when we get to point D, and now you're going on to point E, and this is what you have to do if you want to follow up. And then you got to carry on even further than that and, prepare, and basically be prepared to not give up, and that's part of the teaching. Because if I would have gave up in December, I wouldn't be in December of 2018, I wouldn't be where I am here today, to which, yes, I'm frustrated, yes, it makes me feel sick, yes, it disturbs me, it weakens me, it frightens me, you know, all that wonderful loose harvesting that certain entities in our society like to feed off of, you know, good for them, bad for me, but... When I go back into the video that I posted into the description box and I listen to myself and my mentality back then, you know, and I'm struggling between working on the nonprofit and continuing on with the fight with my family, right? Which, in essence, is um, a, a, which in essence is a precedent for the nonprofit. In other words, whatever I'm fighting for against in my family. I also fight for other families. But other families may not be uh, inclined to even attempt to fight because they wouldn't know where to begin. And the fear factor would step in first and basically paralyze them to prevent them from fighting back. I'm providing 
a quote unquote teaching of a way to deal with that fear where you can step over it and instead of having it control you you control it and by you controlling it helps you to move forward for whatever it is that you're trying to do in this kind of a situation to the point where you know there's just anything is possible under the sun right life has a way of turning itself around right you know and uh, so the, for me the silver lining is whatever it is that I'm having to struggle with perpetually here at this point where it makes me always feel like I'm down here versus over there you know I, I do feel it is a form of teaching so I've got to find a way to uh, make it more clear versus as in a story because I I'm just I just tell the story as it unfolds right so anyway that's why I, I I really need a wipeout board and I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna write down I'm going to but there's other things I have to do first so we just have to do it this way on the fly for now okay that's all we can do see my eyes are changing now oh, different glasses that's why these glasses I can use for the computer Oh my god. These dollar store glasses, I can somewhat read with these. Okay. We're just going to finish it and then uh, I'll try and stay quiet. <coughs> we were on other claims, right? We'll just start at 77, or do I, should I read 76? We'll start at 76. Just recap. Finally, I must address an underlining thread that pervades the notice of civil claim. The plaintiff alleges that she and her family have been stalked and harassed by members of public sector unions for decades. These allegations seek to address perceived wrongs relating to the family's eligibility for social assistance and other government programs. 77. The plaintiff's sweeping allegations in the Notice of Civil Claim attempt to link all past complaints into a government-wide conspiracy to disenfranchise the plaintiff and her family. Those complaints go back to the 1990s. She describes those issues in terms of her family being stalked and harassed by members of public sector unions. So he just wrote in circles. He didn't really say much other than he repeated himself. 78. Simply put, the plaintiff's litigation, sorry, simply put, put simply, sorry, put simply, the plaintiff's litany of complaining relating to her perception of the manner in which she was threatened by government employees do not constitute a cause of action. And what is he basing that particular statement on? He's not being specific. 
and he sure in the hell didn't investigate anything to be 100% sure on whatever he was assuming. <clears throat> 79. As a result of my analyst above, I find sufficient grounds to strike the notice of civil claim and dismiss the entire action. Put simply, the notice of civil claim discloses no reasonable claim against the defendants. It also it's also bound to fail. It is in relation to Mr. Duncan an abuse of process. 80. The plaintiff's notice of civil claim is struck. The action is dismissed. 81. In respects of cost... Okay, I read that, right? Let me just read it again. In respects of cost, as noted, the plaintiff brought a similar action which was dismissed. I have found that this action is an abuse of process despite my sympathy for the tragic losses suffered by the plaintiff. It would be wrong for me to continence the improper steps that have been taken by the plaintiff in this case. The defendant is entitled to costs at scale B for the entire action. Okay, so I wanted to say something, but I just thought I'd read it through and just be quiet. So Oh, see, that's why when I'm reading, I like to talk, because I have to think back what I was going to say, right? And I, I just, I mean, either or, we know we're going around in circles. The, the, the judge is biased, he's being prejudiced, and he's it's a breach of trust due to negligence, because he's making a lot of assumptions that technically he has no grounds to do because he never got to look at any documents, and any documents that he did look at he refused to acknowledge as well as he's trying to hide the fact that Justin Bowden had the enduring power of attorney, the two attorneys presented to him and he switched it around and threw it out as Fraser Health Authority at that time admitted that they didn't know where John went after they released him from John's, you know. In the video that I'm providing kind of recaps what happened for that. Okay, now I'm sure I talked more about it in regards to other videos right after the fact, but I'd have to sit and listen through them. But the one video that I did pull up, you know, I talk a lot about the foundation and my, you know, what I'm going to do with it and my feelings and, you know, and my fight for Uncle John. And, you know, after remember, Shimei was still alive at this time. It was Shimei who was crying for Uncle John. It was Shimei who came with me that day standing in front of Judge Bowden. Okay, and it was Shimei who was in the crowd sitting here with Andre crying as Judge Bowden was throwing out Uncle John to the wolves, basically, because he believed that Uncle John released himself. Uh, okay, because that's right, Fraser Health, they're just saying that John released himself, but then they don't even know where John went. Anyway. <laughs> Uh, John did not release himself, people. If John released himself from a care facility that he had been in for for freaking 20 days, 23 days, or whatever it was, from the time they transferred him over from the Surrey Memorial Hospital, to which he was in there for three weeks because they were too busy running around doing mail fraud and all this other crap, 
you know, and then he releases himself to only end up in an emergency ward across the water in a different health authority where he ends up staying in that hospital for months on end while everybody's running around looking how to get his ID so that they can go get into his bank and start transferring money. And like, this is some serious stuff that's going on here, people. And I don't know if and how I will ever be able to hold the government to account for what they've done to my family, my whole family, including Uncle John. No matter what this judge wrote down, he admitted family members that are just important as the ones that are either in this report or whether they're dead. Okay, it doesn't matter. A family is a family. The family's been targeted. I have a right to represent my family. I am the caregiver to my family. I am the mother to my family. I am I am I am I am the attorney to the family. And I will continue to do so and I will try to bring it in a way where it teaches people to be able to do it for themselves because ain't nobody going to do it for them. And until they start standing up one family at a time, another family at a time, to where we've got hundreds, tens of thousands of families standing up for their families, then maybe we might see change. It's not going to take one family with one person like me doing this to make change. But if that one person like me can inspire other families to attempt to stand up for themselves with eyes wide open, knowing that it's not going to be easy, and you might never win whatever it is you think you're trying to get, but you still come out with a silver lining? Because, you know, I'm going to die soon, right? And when I die, that's, that's a big bullhorn that's going to be put in a box and tucked away like a dirty secret.